Summer League is here, which means it's time for Kings fans to get that feeling of hope once again. The defending champs dominated the California Classic with three straight double digit wins and man did Keegan Murray show out. When you take a player fourth overall, you obviously want them to perform well in Summer League, but at the very least show that you belong in this league. Not only did Keegan do just that, but he was the best player on the court by a pretty wide margin. He put up averages of about 20 points and 8 rebounds while shooting an efficient 51% from the field and 44% from 3. Murray dominated in games 1 and 3 of the Classic, but definitely struggled quite a bit in his second game. So let's take a look at everything Keegan showed us to his first 3 games in a Kings uniform. The Kings opened Summer League with a set designed for Keegan to get a look on the perimeter. Keegan and Keita set staggers for Jerry Roden, which turns into a twirl action where Keegan flares out to the corner off an exit screen from Keita. Keegan gets squared up off the catch and drills the open corner three. This kind of movement shooting off screens was really on display throughout these first three games. Here's another beautiful set, a DHO into a ball screen while on the weak side, Keegan comes off another exit screen this time from Keon Ellis. Keegan looks to the wing to create a better passing angle and hits another three off what's probably the quickest release we've seen out of him thus far. This is probably the most intriguing play to me. Kings run staggers for Keegan, but watch how he sets his man up with his little stutter step hesitation that gets him enough space when coming off these screens. He doesn't even get squared up off the catch, yet he drills the movement jumper with no hesitation. Special stuff for a guy his size. Kings go to zoom action where Keegan hands it off to Ferrari then proceeds to come off a flare from Keita. Miami switches off ball and off the catch Keegan pump fakes to get his defender up in the air and from there a one dribble pull up into a midi. Love seeing him be able to attack closeouts like this. My guy Marksy on Twitter does some incredible work and he went through and individually tracked every closeout Keegan faced in the California Classic. He attacked a total of 23 closeouts and the results were as follows. 52% of the time resulted in a shot, drove 44% of the time, and made just one swing pass. So let's take a look at some of this in action. I've already shown a lot of the movement shooting that Keegan brings, but he provides value with this spacing regardless of the actions. Just this standstill catch and shoot ability is a huge plus and we saw it in action a ton so far. Rather it be in the half court or in transition, this ability is going to be there right away. With this kind of shooting ability, it's important Keegan is able to effectively attack closeouts off the dribble. We saw this with mixed results so far, but there have definitely been some positive signs. Here off the catch, he plants his right foot and explodes left, leans into the contact on the drive, and finishes at the rim with his left. Another situation where his threat from deep opens up a drive opportunity. Pump fakes to get his defender in the air and takes long strides to the basket. He gets a great look at the rim, but just can't get the finish to go. The main problem with Keegan attacking off the dribble is he tends to have tunnel vision, really only looking to create for himself. He can get himself into bad situations or throw up wild shots at the rim because he isn't under control when the help comes. I want to see more simple reads like this. Two dribbles, draw the help, kick out to the corner. We did see flashes of this grab and go ability though. Like here where he glides up the court, absorbs the contact, extends out, and finishes with his left. This off the dribble ability is still a big question with Keegan, but I do like that he's working on it in Summer League. Keegan said Chris Middleton is someone who he models his game after and it's very evident when watching him. Here Keita sets a screen near the top of the key and Keegan catches his man sleeping, explodes off the pick and quickly gets downhill creating a 2 on 1 advantage. Takes a couple dribbles before rising up for the off balance midi and that's money. This time Keegan is patient and waiting for the screen, he gets around the pick with one dribble, slight hezzy and 1-2 steps into another mid range jumper. We didn't see a lot of this in between game at Iowa so I love seeing him work on it here. Everyone always talks about how Keegan's post game won't translate to the NBA because teams won't run post ups for him on this level in general. And for the most part that's true, but there will be some instances here and there where he gets his chances and we saw some of it in Summer League. Here Keegan slices to the strong side block and the defender lets him get way too good of positioning. He makes himself available with active hands, catches, drop steps into an easy dunk. Here he catches it and initially faces up to see where the help is coming from. He knows he can spin baseline and then drills the off balance, extremely tough fadeaway. Sacramento ran the same action on three consecutive possessions in this first game, basically designed to get Keegan a face up opportunity in the high post or slot area. This first possession he hits the defender with the rocker step or a shimmy jab and drives left into the defender's body. He doesn't get the initial awkward finish to go, but he has a quick second jump that would make Bagley proud and he puts back his own miss. 
Next time down, he gets the ball a bit higher in the slot area and utilizes fakes and jabs before attacking the left. This time he gets cut off, so he spins middle, elevates, and double clutches in the air to get the tough bucket to fall. And on the third possession, Keegan is being overplayed, so he makes a strong back cut to take advantage. This is a great pass from Ferrari, leading Keegan to the basket, and Murray is able to locate the ball in the air and finish all in one motion. The basket counts due to a goal tent, and this just shows you some of the high IQ and instincts Keegan has. A lot of the struggles in the second game came from being asked to do much more than he's capable of. The Kink Summer League team lacks any true advantage creators on their roster, and Keegan was trying to do a lot off the dribble, creating for himself and others. And this is just something he's not comfortable with right now. Here he rejects the kid's screen, but doesn't come off hard enough to generate an advantage, and he picks the ball up in a bad spot. Instead of being patient and waiting for a better angle, he tries to force a cross-court pass, but it gets tipped and stolen. On this play, he does a good job attacking the closeout, but there's no need for this pump fake. He already drew the big up, so this is a wasted motion that allows the big to regain his balance and get a hand on the pass. He just needs to make quicker decisions. And then here, Keegan is isolating against a guard at the top of the key, but he just doesn't have a tight enough handle to get away with it. He does show great effort in hustling back and saves a basket with a block though, making up for his mistake. Moving over to defense, this is the area that really surprised me the most so far. Murray was a good defender at Iowa, but I think there were fair questions about his lateral movement and adjustment to the NBA. But that hasn't really shown up in Summer League. In fact, I think his perimeter defense has been excellent. He moves and slides his feet really well for his size and didn't give up any straight line drives. One thing that really stuck out to me is his deceleration. He's had the ability to start and stop when defending guards and it's really impressed me. Guard gets downhill and jump stops in the paint. Watch Keegan plant his back foot and lunge forward for the contest. Never loses his balance. And even here, when the offensive player pushes off, even though there's a lot of space created, Keegan never lost his balance and still gets somewhat of a contest using his length. There have also been flashes of a much improved hip speed in Keegan that I just didn't see from him in Iowa. If he can keep up and continue to improve his mobility on the perimeter, he could probably become a much better defender than people realize, myself included. My main question with him was always that I didn't think that he could flip his hips quick enough, nor have the lateral quickness necessary, but there's a good chance that I was wrong here. Now Keegan wasn't perfect, there were still plays where he was a step slow in flipping his hips or allowing players to turn the corner. He also got beat off the dribble too easily on some of his closeouts, but overall the flashes we saw were extremely promising. Keegan talked about how he wants to get better at defending the pick and roll, but I thought his screen navigation has been really solid so far. He definitely puts the effort in to get over screens and he isn't afraid of making that initial contact with the screener. Plus his length and size helps him in his recovery, being able to alter shots from behind. His anticipation of screens was great, which leads me to believe the communication on the court was there. But if he can continue to anticipate and get skinny through screens, then maybe he will be able to defend threes in the NBA. Defensive instincts were on a full display here, makes contact with the screener using his left, and comes off the screen riding the ball handler's hip. Kato lets the roller get behind him, so this signals a switch for Keegan. They try to fit the lob over the top, but Keegan anticipates and makes a break on the ball, looking like an NFL defensive back. The help defense has been incredible. Rather it be making necessary rotations, jumping passing lanes, or weak side rim protection, Keegan has been all over the court defensively. He's rarely out of place and constantly in position to make a play. He makes such quick breaks on the ball and can read plays before they develop. This was on display a ton in that last game against the Lakers. And for a team like the Kings who have had such awful team defenders over the past few years, getting Keegan who's always engaged on that end is a massive win. So I hope you guys enjoyed this breakdown and let me know what you would like to see next. I have a ton of content planned over the next month or so, and potentially even more on Keegan depending how Vegas goes. Anyways, thank you guys for watching, and see you next time.